That's chairman of the uh, Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, the Honorable Samuel Atacha, who is MP for Ibuakwa South. He's actually joined us on the line. Honorable, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Um, before you join us, I was playing the soundbite from your press conference there. You sought to clarify uh, a study that was, okay, not clarify, but shed more light on a report that was, or a study that was conducted in the West Africa sub-region. And you were trying to explain to us uh, the cost of producing and selling thermal energy and hydro energy. We appear to be mostly doing hydro energy. Are you saying that we should have remained with hydro energy and not gone thermal, which is costing us more? Please help us understand what your position was. Honorable, can you hear me? Hello, yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Great. So the question is um, before. You came on, we're playing a soundbite from your press conference where you were explaining uh, what you found from a survey that was conducted from 2017 in the West Africa sub-region. You were uh, picking issue with um, the use of thermal power. Are you suggesting that we should have remained on hydro and not necessarily thermal, or I did not get your, your point cl clearly? Yes, I was saying that um, it's cheaper to use hydro uh, for obvious reasons, you wouldn't need a kind of fuel to power uh, hydro as we do in relation to thermal. But the whole point of the matter is that it is now found that um, um, we need a mix because the, the thermal generation can be unreliable because of climatic conditions. We have a situation in which um, the volumes of water in the Kosovo um, uh, Dam went terribly bad and that could affect generation. So there's always a mix. So if you want to do proper comparison, then see need based um, uh, analysis. Rather than you saying that, oh, uh, it's cheaper in some other places, where probably all that they are doing is using hydro and not thermal. This is all the kind of analysis I was trying to make. So wherever uh, you use thermal, it is uh, the price is um, higher than when you use hydro. So it's sometimes it's not be a good comparison to say that the tariffs in some places are higher than others and cheaper than others, and you don't give the underlying factors. The underlying factors will be what kind of generation are you talking about? Is it hydro, a mix of it, or just thermal? That, that is where you have the price differential. Okay, let's go uh, broadly now into the main issue. So you complain about the power purchase agreements that were signed by the Mahama administration. The World Bank country director spoke last week or so, and uh, he said that Ghana was really in under the effect of the power purchase agreements. The NDC has categorically denied that and even went at length to say that the country director was engaging in local politics to satisfy his own politics back home, where he comes from. What are the key power purchase agreements that you are saying now uh, have become a burden on the taxpayer? Well, the, the ones that are running, even Mary is one of them. I saw Glaze yet another. And the rest of them, you see, uh, why we talk like that, and I list my uh, because you cannot change the fact. It's a cold fact that if you even pay regard to uh, what um, the energy for growth hub and the IEA put together, it is conclusive of the fact that the power uh, 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 generation uh, through this uh, take or pay have been very, very, very um, uh, pernicious in effect. As far as the finance of this nation is concerned, if you had a space, I could quote you some figures for you to see. Please do, so because have... I, I would want to, and again, while you quote the figure, I'll be happy if you can quote them. And also, uh, beyond Ameri and Asogli, which other power plants are a problem for us? And if you could give me specific figures to support this claim, I would be grateful. Okay. So, for example, let me um, um, give uh, I'm a quote from the IE report, um, which is dated... Uh, the. Uh, the 15th day of March 2021, uh, the page number three, I quote, in 2018, excess generation capacity contracted under take or pay PPE cost the government 320 million in capacity charges 
estimated to increase to 620 million annually with the addition of new plants in 2019. These unused supply charges are one of the most significant sources of financial strain on the sector. Cumulative net sector debt was 2.7 billion in 2018, with 30% payable to the private sector. This term is equivalent to 33% of the government's 2018 tax revenue, highlighting the scale of the financial burden. Please, these are co-print. These are in co-print, and it's not uh, an MPP generated um, uh, 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 figures. These are even same kinds of international consequence who are not wearing party colors. They are, they are turning out the figures. And, and what is the point of the matter then? Because sometimes it becomes like, are we doing propaganda with the energy sector? We shouldn't do propaganda with the energy sector. And in the first conference, I made it so clear that as oxygen is to the body, so is energy to the in the economy. So when you see people trying to do propaganda with the energy sector, at least much to be desired. So, so currently, how much are we paying as a state for power that we are not using? Well, I cannot say it on top of my head, but it can always be the same. So I was just trying to give you the, the respect so far. I wanted to talk based on what has been ascertained. I cannot tell you, I mean, what is being paid for now, but it can always find out. Okay. Now, yes. are there, out of the 53, are there power companies that we currently have a contract with which you would describe as superfluous or useless? Well, I have some I have some um, a num I mean uh, projections here. If you if you look at it's not only um the take of pay. Let me let me I mean maybe I raise a few of them. There's a uh, there's a Sono Asogli Power Company. It has two of them. The Car Power Ghana Limited AXA, which is now ended and they have renegotiated Send Power Generation Company, Amandi, and then um Main Energy Solar, and then Senate Energy Limited, and then Early Power Limited, DXP Company Limited, and then we have another one, um, Sofistana Company Limited, and the rest of them. They are all in 30 years. Yes, and what about them? What, what are you saying about them? Are you saying that all of them are totally unnecess unnecessary and a waste to the of country? Course, is that, what, is that what you mean? Yes, they are all sick of pay. That is what we have. If you install the uh, machine, but you are not using the energy, you pay. That is the essence of the take or pay. Take or take or pay means whether or not uh, you 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 use the power, you have to pay the company. Correct. Yeah, that is so. And we are using yeah. you are, we are using the power. Are we not? Are you suggesting that there is excess power in these plants that we are neither using nor exporting to neighbors? Yes. That is what the, the, the Ministry of Energy is saying, that we have excess capacity. But it's interesting that Mahama government leaves behind these power purchase agreements, which you have described as excess capacity. And yet, one of the key major things you did, or one of the key things you did in the power sector when you came into office, was to extend the car power deal, where you even asked for the vessel to be replaced with a bigger vessel from Turkey. Um, can you really explain to us then how you decide to extend a contract and yet, and for instance, Ameri, you went to do the innovation deal in Parliament. This is something that you complained about, and yet you are keeping it on the books. How do you see that these are unnecessary, and yet you still have them, and even extending their contracts? Well, you wouldn't know the strategic significance of you keeping some of the um, IPP. For the simple reason that 11 of them were, were, were sort of abrogated when, when MPP came into power. Some of them were kept for strategic reasons. And that, I want to stress that as so important because if you cancelled every um, uh, PPA, what was going to happen is that we would have reverted to do So then why are you blaming something that has become a saviour for you? For which reason? So this is like an admission that 
we are not in doom so because of the power purchase agreement that Mahama signed. How then are you turning around to blame him for the plans that he has brought, which has led to stability in the sector? I, I want to understand. I, I want you to understand one hard fact that whatever Mahama created has very serious financial implications for the country. I don't think anybody can run away from that. And therefore, if you got uh, another pair of hands and they looked at the contract and they, they used a I mean, skill and understanding so that it doesn't become very pernicious for the rest of this country, you think it's a, it's, a, it's a useless engagement. So what are you going to do about the rest of them? Now, we have a whole situation in which Will be, will be swallowed by uh, judgment and the rest of them. So when, when we inherit a trouble, the way you manage the trouble is also part of your, your work as a government. We couldn't have said that because Mahama has created problems for, I mean, the, the subsidiary government, then we're just going to misbehave. And then there will be a, such a death overhang or judgment death, and we can't handle it. So some of them, we decided to negotiate on to good work. For example, this um, 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 actor that you are talking about, it's been properly negotiated, hasn't it been? It's not, it's not take and pay. So the move from the take or pay under Mahama and then the renegotiation is now take and pay, which is, is, is also one of the best ways of relieving the, the, the serious effects of payment. All right. Uh... And, and, all yeah. right, now, Mahama's minister for power was um, Dr. Kwabna Donko. He had to leave office in relation to problems in the sector. The man who was his deputy at the time almost became like the de facto minister at the, at the ministry, John Jinapo. He has joined us for an intervention. I don't know if you have some time to just listen to him and possibly rebut afterwards, if you don't mind. Yes. Great. Let me go to the other phone lines. John uh, Abdullah Jinapo is member of parliament for Yape Kuso. He's member of the Energy Committee. Um, Honorable, you've just heard your chairman there of your, of your committee, Honorable Atachia, explain how we are losing some $320 million uh, um, due to capacity, excess capacity that you have signed in, the, in all those power purchase agreements that you engaged in when you were in government. Um, what would be your response, having heard the, 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 the issues he's raised? Thank you very much. I'm listening to Chairman, and I'm wondering whether... Uh, anyway, I don't want to sound offensive. But first of all, he mentions 43 tick or pay agreements. Is that not it? Yes. It's specific. He says in 2008, specific. He says 320 million. He's specific. Has he provided with the 43 agreements that he's talking about? He has mentioned a number of them. Uh, Ameri, Asogli, Kappa, AXA, Send, Amandi, Senate, Elipa, PSC, uh, Safisana. Senate was not signed by Mahama. Asogli was not signed by Mahama. Tempo was signed by Mahama. Trojan was not signed by Mahama. So the first thing you do is to give the 43. I mean, this is simple, 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 simple analogy. You call PCFM. You make a claim, you say 43, give them the 43. I'm sure listeners will just say that, look, this request I'm making of chairman is basic. Because you call the media and you say, look, the man signed 43 PPA. And that in 2018, this 43 ag agreement. Pardon? Okay, uh, Honorable Tatcha, you're not on the air. Um, I, want, I have a lot to deal with, but, but, Chairman. Just hold yeah, on. So if you could just kind yeah, of listen I, to him, I'll come back response. to you. And these things, I wouldn't allow them to go like that. I've just issued a formal response because I read the CTFM story that even says that you spoke on behalf of the committee. Uh, first of all, I debunked that it's not a committee. So I've been speaking on behalf of the minority. Of... No, I'm saying the story. I'm responding to a story. So I've issued a statement. But that is one. Two is that, Moro, I refer you. And you see, these things, it's not about what you say. It's the document. I refer you to the 2019 Energy Statistics document published by the Energy Commission, page 7, table 301, installed grid electricity generation capacity, end of December 2018. I specifically took that document, and I keep this document. 
two thermal plants, only two, only two, car power and a Mary. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thermal plants. Even in 43 doesn't even come in. Total from independence to date. Total thermal plants that were in the system as at December 2018 were not even up to 20. To install the plant, declare availability. So that when we say, even though you are available, we cannot take it. Then you say, look, I went for a loan. If you can't take it, give me something which is capital recovery. That's what we call excess capacity, or others call it take or pay. So how can you have about 15 thermal plants in total in the system? Installed, though, not even dependable, and not available. And yet you are quoting 43. And I will send you this document. This document makes, excuse my language, nonsense of this whole 43. I don't know where you got the 43 from. Okay, let, let's hear him. I, I think it's, it's fair to hear him. Let, let's hear him to respond directly to that, and you can respond to other issues. You pay regard to the IEA Ghana the, and Energy for Growth Up document, which was, I mean, uh, generated on the 16th day of March 2021. This is what it says about um, um, the power um, 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 PPA. Listen, I'm quoting from page two. During the 2011-2016 power crisis, ECG committed to 43 PPAs, while the Minister of Energy signed three additional PPAs with ETP. So this is a false document. You understand? And then we are, we are educated that when the MVP came into power, some of these contracts were terminated. But what is very important that I wish that with all respect to you, I want to address. It's what has been put in the public domain by the ministry as to the excess capacity charge payment. And I beg you to quote, on the issue of idle capacity, between 2017 and 2020, the annual cost of idle capacity ranged between 105.4 million and 375.7 million per year. Over the period, the total amount of 368 million have been paid for idle capacities, capacities and the further 600 million have been paid for the cost of reserve margins totaling US dollars 968 million. So, so what do you make of this? Oh, I'm touch no oh, oh. idle capacity. Okay, so I'll, I'll, touch, I'll let him speak on the idle capacity bit and how his, the their government intended to deal with that issue. But on the specific issue he asked you, the 43 um, uh, power purchase agreement, he says it was not 43, and he wants you to list them, if you may. Do you have that readily available to, to list for him? No, I don't have it. I'm quoting the source document and the period where ECG signed on that level of PPA. That's what I'm quoting from. I'll be very candid with you. I'm quoting from the IEA Ghana and with Energy for Growth Cup Collaboration. All right. And, let, yes. let me. I know, I know, you know Paul, that should satisfy you then. He has given you the source document. He's, he's not just saying the figures of his head. He says he has a reference document he's referring to. You can proceed based on that and also then explain about the excess power. Hello. Hello, Mr. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Fortunately, I didn't hear, Chairman. But if you can just paraphrase it for me, I'll deal with it. He says that he he was not listing those companies. You asked him to mention the forty-three. He says he was sourcing it on the IEA document, uh, which he believes is public information that he has relied on. So he's not going to readily list every company out the forty-three for IEA. you. IEA. I, I believe that's what he the most authentic. Uh, Organization is the Energy Commission, not the IEA. The IEA, what do they know about? Let, let, me, just, let me just get the name of the company properly from him. Honorable Atacha, what exactly is the source document? If you could just say that again. Honorable Atacha, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, the, the, yeah, I can hear you now, sir. Your reference, you your reference is to which organization? Um, is the collaboration between the Energy for Growth Hub of Washington, D.C., 
a think tank, and our own Institute of Economic Affairs, Accra. And he says yeah. that, but have you, have you checked Energy Commission or Ministry of Energy or Electricity Company of Ghana? Have they given any such information? We have not debunked it. These are, these are documents aside from the Ministry of Energy. All right. That is the whole point of the matter. Okay. So, so, let me then give it back. He wanted to know the source. Um, Honorable Jinapo, um, he's referencing Energy for Hub, Energy for Growth Hub and IEA, they did a collaborative work, which is what he is referencing. He said the documents from which institution? Energy for Growth Hub. And then so the which, institute, which institution of, is and, and he said it's American based. And then the oh. Institute of Economic Affairs. I mean, we have our Energy Commission established by law. They are the most authentic institution that publishes energy statistics. I'm quoting from that document, and I'm quoting from Table 3.1, page 7. I mean, a website has published something. They haven't listed their plan. And the NDP goes to take that, call the whole media, and say the 43 PPAs in 2018 cost us $320 million. I mean, we can do better. I mean, I'm, I'm even now struggling how to proceed with this debate. All right. So, so, so on the record, say, on the record, if, how mm -hmm. many PPAs did you sign before leaving office? I can give them to you. But I'm saying that as of 2018, and I have the list here, car power ship, a Mary plant. Uh, car power ship, a Mary plant, AXA. These are the three that were available as of 2018. And the And I can share every other document you request. But one is specific on 2018. I have to go to the source document and pick this document. It is not true. I mean, it just cannot stand the test of time. So I think that they should better withdraw that statement so that we can deal with the facts. All right. Um, the issue, the other issue that he has raised is the excess power that we have so that we are paying for power that we are not using. How do you deal with that? Moreover, I heard him even talk about, as I speak, I'm opening another document, AXA. He, I heard a chairman talk about the AXA agreement and say that they've changed it to take and pay. That is not true. I settled this thing with the deputy minister, the I have the agreement here. Go to 5.1. The table tells you exactly how much you pay when they declare availability, and we say we are not ready to take that power, and it's specific that when we take power, we pay X amount. When we do not take power, we pay Y amount. That is excess capacity. And it's stated, capital recovery. Capital recovery is what you call take or pay. And so for them to still insist that the new asset deal, it is take and pay, I'm asking, Sometimes I just get sad by some of these statements because it lacks basis. You see, we can debate on opinion, but as for the hardcore facts, documentary evidence, that cannot be a subject for debate. And as I speak to you, I'll just quote that provision for you because I, I underline it. Guaranteed capacity, it is stated here. And then capital recovery charge, 1.86. 75 US cents a kilowatt hour for the first 120 months of the new PPA PDS 10. Then the next one says that in case the plant is dispatched, 1.78 US cents. In case the plant is not dispatched, that means that they haven't even delivered power. It is 0 0.7650 US cents per kilowatt hour. Abba. And this is by you. You people signed it. And yet you are denying your own document and saying that despite signing this document, the new AXA deal is take and pay and not take or pay. And why you do that? I think that you just take it for fools. And I get very, very sad that we can reduce this debate to this level. You no, know, it's, it's not proper at all. We don't do that. All right, moving forward, so the, the, the headline is that the power agreements under your tenor are costing the nation $320 million. 
and this is for unused power. The point is, when you were leaving office and signing the power, which obviously, based on all the calculations, has become excess, what, what was your plan? How did you intend to dispose of the excess power? First of all, that story is false. If that story was not false, then we could be engaging in that debate. A lot of the payments you are here are under recovery payment. And I have the full Excel sheet. And I intend doing a full engagement one of these days so that I walk everybody through how these things are determined. If the just losses alone has increased from 22 23% to 31%. So when the Minister of Finance pay for those losses, it is not excess capacity. It is power delivered. There's a reserve margin of 20%. It is statutory. This government came and President Akufuado decided that it shouldn't be part of the tariff structure. It's a political decision. When you pay for that, that is not excess capacity. So what they describe as excess capacity is a misnomer, it is false, it is contrived, and indeed, it is as a result of forest losses, exchange rate differentials, general ATTC, which is aggregate technical and commercial losses, and the unnecessary political interference, which is leading to this payment. It cannot be attributed to President Mahama. We reject it because immediately these same PPAs expire. They quickly renew them, not for five years that we did, for 15 years. Look, this double standard, we will not allow it to go. And we will challenge it every time, every minute, because the fact speaks itself. Thank you for speaking to us. That's John Abdullah Jinapo.